All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and usually, I'm going to be completely honest with you, right? Usually I wake up and I can't wait to do this thing. I can't wait to record. I can't wait to show you what's going on. I love what I do, right? But today, I'm a f <laughs> today, today is going to be a bit of a long one, unfortunately. Things can change and they can change quickly and I think they're changing and we just have to be objective, right? There's a time in the markets to be in the markets, there's a time to be out the markets, and there's a time to go fishing. I'm gonna illustrate this by hopping straight into a NASDAQ chart, okay? So we're gonna come back and do the charts at the end, but if you're following this channel, right, we got long on this breakout, and we hopped out somewhere here, and then we hopped back in here, and we hopped out somewhere in this neighborhood, right? Now, what do I mean? There's a time to be in the market, that was here. There's a time to be out the market, that was here. There was a time to be in the market here, and then, during all of this, this was a time to go fishing, okay? This was a time to go fishing until we got a trend line breakdown. This trend line right here was the trend line breakdown that we were riding until we got a breakdown and then it was time to be out the market again. Since then, it was time to get back in the market, right? But the market has spoken, okay? We have trend line breakdowns. The cycles are telling me that it's time to get out of the market and be patient for a little while and then there will again be a time to get back in the market probably in the next couple of weeks and then we will go fishing into the end of the year whilst we ride this last portion of this rally that's my thoughts but because we've got technical damage because we got breakdowns we've gone from having a time where it's time to be in the market to now a time where i think it's time to get out of the market so there's going to be a lot to go over today in the charts i've got a little bit of news first i wanted to go over so i'm going to get straight into it look apple is apparently going to launch built-in stock trading on its iphones so I don't really know what to make of this, apart from it seems like a pretty bad idea for your average retailer. Um, I think if you can just go and open an app and then trade directly on your iPhone, perhaps it's linked to their Apple banking system that they have. To me, it speaks to getting a bunch of retail to buy the top. Bitcoin is doing Bitcoin things. You can see in the pink here, this is the current cycle, and it's actually right in between the two cycles. Now, if you've been on this channel before, you know I was championing this idea that we're going to get a blow off top into the halving and then some kind of distribution in a three-year bear market, something like this. And that is to be determined. If we obviously continue to go sideways in between here, then we're just gonna have to scratch this one off and go back to the original halving shape. But so far, undeniably, Bitcoin is right around the neighborhood where you'd want it to be. And the last piece of news, the last thing I wanted to show you is this is the issuance schedule for the block rewards for Bitcoin. So right now, 6.25 Bitcoin is issued every 10 minutes roughly when a miner finds the hash of a block and is rewarded with a block reward. But if I draw your eyes to here, 2032, okay? Less than 10 years away, the block reward is gonna be 0.78 Bitcoin. And just 13 years away in 2036, the block reward is gonna be 0.39 Bitcoin. That's all the miners are gonna get for finding one block. And if you do the maths, I'd, actually, if anyone can do the maths, I'd be interested to know what, what numbers you come up with. I get a floor price of 500K at this level. Like that's the, that's the level at which if Bitcoin was to drop below 500K, the network would be in serious jeopardy of forcing a bunch of miners to switch off and putting them out of business. So that's my floor price calculation. It's roughly 500K. If anyone wants to do the maths, uh, throw it down in the comments. I'd love to know what number you get for a floor price. But if I'm right, then that is pretty significant gains between now and then. And of course, with an asset which is currently a 70 vol asset, meaning it undergoes a 70% drawdown in a bear market, we are most probably going to be in the single digit millions per coin somewhere in this neighborhood between 2032 and 2036, if not before. So pretty wild, right? So of course, the big news yesterday was the Fed indeed paused rates. Now with a 99% probability, we kind of already knew this was going to happen, right? So not really unexpected. Something else that wasn't unexpected was the tough talk, right? Jay Powell came out and he made a bunch of, let's say hawkish statements about being ready to hike if need be and that we're not seeing cuts for a while. In fact, the Fed futures after he was finished talking now show rate cuts not beginning until September of next year. And to put this in perspective, just three months ago, the futures were expecting four rate cuts this year. So massive, massive change, higher for longer narrative is upon us, even though we may not see any more hikes. So the interest rates are now expected to pause for at least a year. The Fed has made it clear higher for longer is here to stay and that they would rather send us into a recession than risk inflation spiking again. And 
Whilst this may sound bad, it's not really out of the expectation with that melt-up chart, is it? So here's the melt-up chart. We've been kind of expecting this new run to all-time highs, followed by a big deflationary bust. And of course, if we're going to have a big deflationary bust, then we are also going to see us enter a recession. So a recession not too far away, I think so. As it stands, at least for the next November meeting, there is little change. I think we were at 69%, we're now at 68.5% probability that we're not going to see any more hikes, that we're going to continue to see this pause play out into November's meeting. But going back to this recession thing, right, going back to this deflationary bust that we're expecting to see the top come in for the stock market somewhere by the end of this year into Q1 of next year, followed by a rollover and a recession. There's three charts here from Henrik that really show that this is getting closer and closer by the day. First of all, the blue right here is the US housing starts. And you can see in this declining phase, the top is likely already in. And usually when we get a significant decline, we will enter a recession. At the same time, we've got the Bureau of Labor Statistics in yellow in this neighborhood where it's starting to roll over and of course get somewhere down into this neighborhood and we will see a recession here. Furthermore, in blue here, the blue line chart is the yield curve and I've been talking about this over and over again on this channel. Inversion is not the problem. Reversion across the zero line is when we get a recession trigger. And as you can see, this is likely going to start to trend upwards now, crossing back above that zero line when we revert the yield curve has always historically triggered the recessions. So expect to see this in the not too distant future, but make no mistake about it. I still think the market has room to run the all time highs first. We'll get to the charts in a bit. Lastly, this yellow line chart shows what is likely a bottom in the unemployment rate. That means unemployment is expected to increase as this metric rolls over. Again, synonymous with recessions kicking in in the not too distant future. And in blue, we have the housing market index. Looks a lot like this decline into the 2008 great financial crisis, doesn't it? Rollover, counter trend bounce, rollover, recession. Rollover, counter trend bounce, rollover, recession. So again, all of these things point to this deflationary bust coming in the not too distant future. I do, however, still think that we have got room to run the all-time highs first. However, as I'm gonna show you, the charts are speaking at the moment and the charts are kind of telling us that we've probably got to do something like this first. So let's be open to everything. We'll get to the charts shortly. And one last chart from Henrik here. This is the 10 year yield. Henrik calling for a massive, massive rollover in yields, culminating in a negative yielding bond. So if we can even put in half of this move, then of course that will give us the space for the market to run the all time highs in the not too distant future. So in summary for everything I've shown you so far, recession is coming. Recession is almost certainly coming in 2024, but until then we do likely have time to run the all time highs. The SPY, the S&P 500, as of yesterday, closed right on its 20 week moving average, which is this thing in red right here. Now, if we close weekly candles below this, this is a weekly candle. If this candle cannot recover this and close above this line this week, then that sets up a move to sweep this local low, putting a new low and potentially coming all the way down to touch the 50 week moving average in blue here. Meanwhile, Bob Lucas is suggesting we may well have a day 10 high for a left translated cycle in the S&P 500, which is now likely going to remain the high for this 40 day cycle, meaning that we probably have to wait until the next 40 day cycle low due around the middle of October before we can see resumption of the uptrend. And finally, before we get into the charts, we're actually not doing anything out of the ordinary for a pre-election year. We have the run up, we stall and chop sideways into the end of the year and then we come out of here swinging into the last couple of months of the year. So we're not really doing anything out of the ordinary for a pre-election year. From a cycle perspective, Bob Lucas has been quite vocal about how he thought that this potentially wasn't the weekly cycle low where I had marked it and we might have to undercut that low one more time, mark this as the weekly cycle low and then go. And I have to admit that unless we can hold this low from back here, then this seems almost certain. I also think the likelihood that we bounce straight out of here and take out that high from back here in day 10 is highly unlikely as it stands. So let's get into the chart. So the dollar, perfect touch off support, continuing to move higher, potential double top in the making, this could certainly roll over. But if it's going to do that, we need to see the euro dollar break out. As it stands, not yet breaking out. So until we get something like this out of the euro dollar, the dollar is probably going to still continue to be a problem child. Here's the 10 year yield. So on the rhetoric, that higher for longer is in play from the Fed. 
is this a breakout or is this the deviation I was calling for? At the moment, it looks much more like a breakout. If it doesn't roll over almost immediately, then we are going to probably enter some higher highs for the 10 year yield. And of course, that will in the short term pressure risk assets. And so moving into the stock market, this is where things start to get frustrating. OK, like I said, there's a time to be in the market that was back here. Breakout, retest, resumption and holding this upper open blue support line. But as of yesterday's close, we have violated this trend line. So the options here are to let the stop do the worry and hope this low holds and see how it goes or to cut the position because the market has spoken. The market has spoken by losing this upper open blue support line. And I think the thing that's prudent for me, at least here, is to perform damage control, right? We've had a great year. We've caught plenty of trades. Let's not start to get completely wrecked and have all of these positions come and chop us out. Worst case scenario, right? I exit these positions and we get a small reversal that then does something like this before dropping into that daily cycle low and we can go again out of that daily cycle low. But I think what's much more likely is that we're going to need to move this daily cycle low lower down. Something like this. Upon getting into that timing window for the daily cycle low, we could probably stage a reversal, mark that as the weekly cycle low, and that sets us up for a huge rally into the end of the year and potentially even Q1 of next year before we get that deflationary bust and the recession set in. So for now, what I need to see is this local low hold for the S&P 500, but undeniably we have an early warning sign and even an exit sign arguably in the fact that we've lost this upward sloping blue support line for the stock market. I would say this scenario is off the table now and the best thing we could hope for is probably something more like this. So I am getting ready to cut this position today. And of course, if we do, if we move this out the way, we cut the position and we get something like this where it rolls over into that cycle low and then goes again, we will just re-enter this long on a breakout of the downward sloping red resistance line. And that should set us up for the rally into the end of the year. So as it stands, getting ready to cut this position, getting ready, unless of course, there's one caveat here. If we can stage some kind of huge reversal today back above this line and set us up for this, then I'm happy to continue to push this long. But if we close week today, then I just want to get out of the way of this position. I just want to close it and then go back to being neutral, go back to being patient and waiting for that cycle low to show up around the 17th of October, plus or minus a few days. It's the same deal with the NASDAQ, isn't it? So all the while we're above this low, the trade is still valid. All the while we're above this red upper sloping support line, we have not got true technical damage. But again, I am getting ready here to get out of the way of this market. I'm getting ready here. If we don't stage some kind of big reversal today, I'm getting ready to just get out of the way and then probably readjust this blue trend line to something like this. Or perhaps we could even set a new one. Maybe we'll do something like this into that cycle low next. And then we could draw a trend line, something like this and get back in on a trend line break. But like I say, there's a time to be in the market and there's a time to be out of the market. I think right now is a time to be getting out of the way, let this thing unfold, figure out where the cycle lows are. And in the worst case scenario, if we go back to this S&P 500 chart, say I jumped out of this position here and then it staged some big upside rally, then it will drop into that cycle low and that's fine. Then we've got an ultra high probability set up out of that cycle low, ready to target the run into the end of the year. So I do think damage control is probably prudent here if, however, the Dow, this is the Dow now, if the Dow can hang around in this area, hold this upward slope in pink support line and start to move higher, then undeniably that is a bullish setup. So I'm willing to keep pushing this until we lose this upward slope in pink support line. But again, if we start to break down from here, then I'm going to want to get out of the way of this market, sit on the side, play patient and wait for a new setup because probably something like this is coming right back up into this blue zone and then go and we can get long as we break back above that blue zone. Overall, we're at critical levels here. We really need to see the lows hold, the local lows and all of these setups. If they don't, then it's just time to get out of the way of the market. Losing these upward sloping support line tells you there's a trend change. And again, there's a time to be in and there's a time to be out of the market. I'm still pushing this FTSE 100 trade. So at the moment, there's no reason to duck out of the way, but close candles back below this yellow line. And again, it's just time to get out of the way of this market and let it do its thing. In terms of gold, I thought there was going to be a gold long yesterday. We wicked above. I was getting ready to pull the trigger and then I decided to wait until the FOMC. I was getting ready to tweet this as well yesterday, but then during FOMC, I thought, I know what happens here. This turns around and it rolls over one last time. So I think we probably do something like this. Once we get that breakout again, that can be a long from me. But for now, no daily close outside of the trend line. So there is no long trigger for gold. 
still pushing the silver trade, still hanging around break even. So maybe it needs to flush this one more time before it can go again. Either way, there will be a setup and a trade coming out of silver before too much longer. Still currently holding this short on oil. So this seems to be working out for now. Some kind of counter trend bounce, retest and a rollover. That could be the most reasonable expectation for me. I know a lot of people are still bullish on oil. A lot of people still think this thing has got to run to 100. And frankly, I like that because I can take the other side of it. So still short and strong on oil and we'll see what the market can give. Moving over to Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin, as you know, if you've been wanting this channel before, we've been looking to take this breakout if it occurs, but it hasn't yet occurred, which tells me, especially if we continue to get rejected here, that we are probably going to continue to chop around inside this sort of fractal, this consolidation cycle for 60 days, and it will be out of that 60 day cycle low that I next think it's time to attack. So unless we can break out, break out of here and we'll respect it, right? But to my mind, it would have done it by now if it was going to. Since it's not, then it seems to me like this is the setup, waiting for that 60 day cycle low to show up and then we can get long out of there. Since there's a bunch of new subscribers, I'm going to explain the difference between these two strategies that I take. So for things like the S&P 500, right, we get long on a breakout and we hop out when there's a trend line breakdown. We get long on a breakout or a cycle low and we hop out when there's a trend line breakdown. Again, we got another trend line breakout. We got long and now we've got a trend line breakdown. We're probably going to hop out again, right? That's, that's just how we do it, okay? That's how we trade normally. But I have a separate strategy for Bitcoin. So it's more or less the same thing. I use the cycle lows for context and I use the trend line breaks to tell me when it's time to get long. But unlike say the S&P 500, where I position myself so I have, if I'm stopped out and I'm wrong, one to 2% account risk. When it comes to Bitcoin, I instead of have a trade on Bitcoin where the stop if I'm wrong is one to 2% of my account size, what I will do is spread that position between Bitcoin, Coinbase, MicroStrategy, and Riot. So they're all very small positions. And if all of them are stopped out, which you'd expect them to be if one was because they're correlated, the total knock on my account is a 2% drawdown. The reason I do this is because I find oftentimes I might take a long on Bitcoin and I get wicked and stopped and then it runs higher. But I've also found that by spreading my position over these blockchain derived stocks and Bitcoin, I get two bonus performance features out of this. The first is if one of them is stopped out or two of them are, sometimes I get left with one or two positions. So I still have some exposure, even though some of the trades were stopped out, meaning I still have some exposure for some upside. And the second reason I do this is I find if Bitcoin is going to move 10% and I spread my position over those blockchain related equities as well, usually these blockchain related equities will run more than 10% because they are higher beta, meaning they move higher than Bitcoin does in the same direction that Bitcoin does. That also means they they draw down lower when Bitcoin is moving down. But overall, that is the strategy for Bitcoin. So rather than hop in and out like I do with these other trades, when it comes to Bitcoin, whether it's out of a cycle low or a trend line break, when I add this position, I usually add Coinbase, MicroStrategy, Riot and Marathon at the same time. So with all that said, like I said, unless we can get a breakout, then we're not adding along here and we'll be targeting down here. This seems to be most reasonable to me at the moment, although I am of course open to adding a breakout on the trend line. In terms of these crypto related equities, I think it's time to start cutting these positions, okay? So I have moved the stop up from this level here. This is now at the same level as this one. So if this is stopped out, this will basically be a break even trade and we will look to sit on the side patiently waiting for the next setup to show up. So when I use a trend line, I use a dash line to show where the stop is. Again, for micro strategy, I have moved these stops up now to this one. So if this position is stopped out, that will also be a clear trend line breakdown and invalidation and all of these positions will also be stopped out. That means I will be walking away with some profit here. And again, I'll be back to neutral, waiting to attack on our next trend line break. Raya is not yet stopped, but looks like it will be upon opening today. And again, it's the same deal. I have moved the stop up from the original position from here up to here. So if this one is stopped, the whole position will be stopped. Again, I'll be walking away with a small piece of profit here and I'll be sat on the sidelines waiting to attack for when we can go again, when is a suitable time to entry, likely out of that 60 day cycle all over Bitcoin. And Marathon, I'm gonna to continue to push this trade, although the stop has been moved to break even for this trade. So again, I'll be walking away with nothing, essentially. This will just be a break even trade if the price makes it all the way back down to the original entry. If that is the case, then all we will do is restart this entire process from the next 60 day cycle all over Bitcoin, meaning once we get here, we'll add the long for Bitcoin, and we'll start to build these positions back up again. Now, it's important to address this for new subscribers. You might be thinking, how come I hop in and out of these trades so fluently? How come I can hop in and out of here and take the profit and not worry about it? But when it comes to the Bitcoin trade, I 
give back a bunch of open profit? It's a very valid question and there's a very good reason for this, right? Let's use MicroStrategy as an example. At some point, a big parabolic advance for these blockchain stocks is going to unfold. So I am happy to build these positions up and then exit for a small piece of profit, a break-even trade, or even a small loss. I'm happy to give back that open profit because I know at some point one of these big parabolic advances is coming. So I would much rather build positions the whole way through this base, ready for when this explodes. That means I can have the highest possible exposure without taking additional risk when this parabola exposed, it explodes upwards. And as this unfolds, that is how I make the most amount of money possible without overexposing myself without risking more than a 2% account drawdown across this whole Bitcoin and cryptocurrency play. So you could argue that this is poor risk management. You could say, well, you should have sold it all here and then you would have been fine. Yeah, that's certainly valid, but I was not taking the same approach that I take with this normal trade for this. What I'm trying to do here is only risk 2% of my account, stack a bunch of positions ready for that parabolic advance. And I said this all along that if we had to take a couple of attempts at this, that was I was more than willing to do that, right? I would make way, way, way more money by stacking these positions and waiting for a parabola than I will by hopping in and out here, in and out here, and then only ending up with one position as that parabola unfolds. So experience has taught me to do this. This has always worked really, really well. At some point, the parabola will show up and hopefully we will have stacked enough positions that we will make game changing and account changing profits as that unfolds. But is a little bit more patience and damage control required in the meantime? Yes, it certainly seems that way. So that is how I'm playing this market. That's how I'm playing these markets. Like I said, unless we can stage massive reversals today or the weekly closes end up on Friday being very, very bullish and back above all those supports, then it's time to get out of the way of these markets, get back to neutral and just play patient for a couple of weeks. The cycle lows will show up for both Bitcoin and for the stock market. The pause is there. So once the market has gotten over the skittishness and figured out power is lying and something's going to break and a recession is imminent, as I've shown you, once the market has figured all of that out, the market will have space to rally into that all-time high at the end of the year. Bitcoin will do Bitcoin things. September historically has been a bad month for Bitcoin. October, November, December, however, very, very bullish months for Bitcoin. So I remain positive. Like I said, I'm remaining in some of these trades. I'm pushing some of these trades, but we know our invalidation levels. We know there's a time to be in and out of the market. And you have to be nimble as a trader, right? You have to be willing to hop out of everything right now, only to get back in again on Monday, if the market tells you to do so. So that's how I see it. That's how I'm handling it. I hope you found value here today. I hope this wasn't too long. And in the meantime, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.